Well, we just will hit the ground running here today. Um, of course, tomorrow is test two. So today's purpose for our hour here is to make sure everybody's prepared for test two. Start out with, were there any questions in the homework from the last couple of classes? Everybody's feeling okay about it? Okay. Okay. Well, I just didn't have the patience for it. That's understandable. So the big topic for this unit is fractions. What's going on there? Okay, I think that's working better. So anyway, unit two is about fractions. So some of the things you need to be able to do with just numerical need to be able to reduce them. You know, for example, if you have 12 sixtieths, you need to look at those and realize both of those numbers can be divided by six or four would both work. Let's do the four first. 12 divided by four is three. 60 divided by four is 15. They can both still be divided by Three, giving us one over five. They actually could have been both divided by 12 to begin with, but as we know, you don't have to hit the biggest number right away. You might be asked to rename. If I give you three fifths, I want you to change that into four fifths. How do we figure out what this number is going to be up here? What do we multiply 5 by to turn into a 40? Eight. So what do we have to do to the 3? Times 8. 3 times 8 is 24. You'll need to be able to convert to a mixed number. You know, something like 27 fifths. Remember, the way we do that, it's a division and a remainder. 27 divided by 5. Well, 5 goes into 27 five times. 5 times 5 is 25. What's left over? It's 2. So that 2 is the pieces that stay in the fraction. So we got five whole objects out of there with two of those fifths left over. So five and two fifths. Now we need to be able to convert to an improper fraction. So if we have three and five eighths, and I want to turn that into an improper fraction. Of course, we know the denominator is not going to change. It's going to stay eighths. We have to break up the three whole objects into pieces, and we do that by three times eight is 24, and we add that to the five pieces to get 29 eighths. You should be able to reduce a fraction with variables in it. Like 44x to the third y to the fifth over 33x to the sixth y squared. To reduce that, remember, we look at the numbers separately. 44 over 33. Now, one big thing we have to remember is because there's variables in it, we cannot change this into a mixed number. It's going to stay as a fraction. Even if it looks improper, it may not be because of the variable. So even though the 44 is bigger than the 33, we're not going to make it into a mixed number. But what can both 44 and 33 be divided by? 11, which gives us... 
4 over 3. So up here in our answer, the numerical part will be 4 in the numerator and 3 in the denominator. For x, there's two things we have to determine. Is it going to go on top or bottom? Bottom. Why does it go on bottom? The bigger power is on bottom. So x goes on bottom, and what's the power going to be? 3. And again, where did we get the 3 from? Yeah, 6 minus 3 is 3. The difference of 3. Perfect. For y, is it going to go top or bottom? Top. 5 is the bigger power, so y is on top. And it's going to have a power of? 3. 5 minus 2 makes 3. So that's going to be 4y to the third over 3x to the third. And that is the reduction of that fraction. You will need to be able to do operations with fractions and mixed numbers. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Um, it is okay to use your calculator. For the numbers, I mean, if you have it, as long as you know how to use it, that is fine. We are going to turn around and make you do some calculations with variables in there that you can't use the calculator on, of course. But for the numerical part, you can use the calculator. <clears throat> Beyond just the simple calculations, you may run into something like this. Um, we might have 2 thirds plus 1 and a half times 5 6. When we do a problem like this, what do we have to do first? The multiplication. We have to do one and a half times five six. And of course, you could do that on the calculator and that would be just fine. I'm going to do it out long way, which means I have to make that improper. So that's three halves times five six. Three and the six cross cancel to give me one and two. One times five is five. Two times two is four. So that's five fourths, or one and one fourth. So I replace the one and a half times five six with one and one fourth, and then I have to add that to the two thirds. So two thirds plus one and one fourth. We do need a common denominator, which will be 12. Two thirds becomes eight twelve. 12, so 2 times 4 makes 8. 1 fourth will become 3 twelfths. We add 8 twelfths plus 3 twelfths is 11 twelfths and 1. We might also run into more complex fractions like 2 thirds plus. 7 eighths over 3 fourths times 2 and 1 sixth. In something like this, what do we have to do first? Do the top. 2 thirds plus 7 eighths. We need common denominator, which is going to be. Twenty-four. Two thirds becomes sixteen twenty-four. Seven eighths becomes twenty-one. We add those. Sixteen and twenty-one is thirty-seven twenty-fourths. Now, normally I would break that into a mixed number, but I know that my next step is going to be to divide it by whatever I get at the bottom, and when I divide, I have to have it as an improper fraction anyway, so we're going to leave it as an improper fraction. 
So on bottom, I have my three-fourths times two and one-sixth. I have to make that an improper fraction. Two times six is 12, plus one is 13, six. What do we do next? Cross cancel. Three and six, both divided by three to give me two and one. One times 13 is 13, and four times two is eight. Now again, I would normally convert that into a mixed number of one and five eighths, but I know that my next operation here is going to be to divide. 37 24 divided by 13 eighths. We're going to change that into 37 24 times 8 over 13. 24 and 8 cross cancel, both divide by 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 24 divided by 8 is 3. So 37 times 1 is 37. 3 times 13 is 39. Sorry, 37 over 39. Isn't that so bad? Maybe? Doable? Okay. What do we have to do here? Parentheses first, good. So one half cubed, or to the third power means you have one to the third power, which is one, one times one times one, over two to the third power, which is eight. So replace the one half to the third with just one eighth. Then what? We multiply. So I'm going to cross cancel the 2 and 8. Both divide by 2. Give me 1 and 4. 1 times 1 is 1. 3 times 4 is 12. So 5 8 minus 1 12. We need to subtract. We have to find a common denominator of. 24, this is going to be 15 and 2, subtract to get 13, 24. What do you think so far? You might have to do a proportion. How would you solve something like this? We cross multiply. What is 12 times 16? Seven hundred twenty. Right? Then we multiply this direction. 36 times the x minus 7. And those have to be equal. So now it's just a matter of solving that equation. 36 times x is 36x. 36 times negative 7. I believe it's negative 252. And then? We'll add the 252. 36x equals 972, and then divide by 36. Was that 27? I believe. Any questions there?
Then the part that takes us back a couple weeks. Operations with fractions that have variables in them. You know, we may have something like 3 over 4p squared plus 5 over 8p. We need to first find our common denominators. For 8 and 4, what's our common denominator going to be? 8. For the variable, remember, it's the largest power, so it's going to be p squared. Now i got to figure out what I have to multiply by. Do I have to change the 4? It has to become an 8, so I have to multiply it by 2. Do I have to change the p squared? No, I'm only going to, I'm keeping the p squared. So I just have to multiply the numerator here by 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Down here, do I have to change the 8? No, it stays an 8. Do I have to change the p? Yes, it's got to become a p squared, so I'm multiplying by p. So 5 times p is 5p. Now when I add, I have 6 plus 5p, which is just 6 plus 5p, all over 8p squared. <clears throat> I might have something like this. 5p squared over 6 minus 3a over 4p. I need a common denominator. For 6 and 4, that common denominator will be 12. The p only appears as a p, so that means I'm going to have just a p is my highest power. What do I have to do to the 6? Do I change the 6? Yes. Times 2 to make 12. And then I need the P. So it's going to be times 2P. So 5P squared times 2P. 5 times 2 is 10. P squared times P is P to the third. On the bottom one, the 4 has to be multiplied by... 3, and the P is already there, so I don't need to change that. So 3A times 3 is 9A. Subtracting, 10P to the third minus 9A is 10P to the third and minus 9A, all over 12P. Questions? Well, those are really the fun ones. The multiplication and division is actually quite a bit easier, I think. So when I'm multiplying something like this, and that's all this is with the parentheses, is just multiplying, I separate out the numbers. I have the 3 over 10 times 5 over 9. And I can reduce or cross cancel. 3 and 9 are going to become 1 and 3. 10 and 5 are going to become 1 and 2. So 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 3 is 6. So up here in my answer, numerically, I have 1 and 6. Then I pull out my variables. Here I have y over nothing. Here I have x squared over y squared. Multiply that out. On top, y times x squared. So that's just x squared y. 
Just putting them alphabetically. On bottom, I just have the y squared. So now in my solution, the only x I have is the x squared on top that stays on top. Does y go on top or bottom? Bottom, bigger power. It's going to have a power of 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, so y to the 1 or just y. So I can either have 1x squared over 6y, or I could just have x squared over 6y. Either one of those is an acceptable answer. Question? No? Okay. We can divide. No, oh, let's do. How is that? 15d over 11x squared divided by. Five D to the third over thirty-three X. Now, of course, the first thing we have to do here is rewrite it. First fraction does not change; it becomes multiplication. And the second fraction, we do the reciprocal, we flip it over. So it's thirty-three X over five D to the third. Now it's multiplication, and we can do exactly what we just did in the last problem. We pull out the numbers. 15 and 5 cross cancel to give me 1 and 3. 11 and 33 cross cancel to give me 1 and 3. On top, I have 3 times 3 is 9 over 1. So in my answer, I've got nine on top and one in bottom. Now I've got my fractions. I've got d over x squared, or my, my variables. I've got d over x squared, and I've got x over d cubed. Multiply those out. d times x is just going to be dx. x squared times d to the third is d to the third x squared. In my solution, where does the d go? Bottom, power of 2. The bigger power was the 3 on bottom. 3 minus 1 is 2. Where does my x go? Bottom and power of 1, or just x. 2 minus 1 is 1. So it's x to the 1 or just x. So that is 9 over 1 d squared x, or you could write it as just 9 over d squared x. Question. You can have something like this. What do you do with that? Well, you take each, there's nothing we can do to reduce inside the parentheses. That's always our first step. Nothing here that we can reduce. Now I just take each piece to the power of 3. What is 3 to the power of 3? 27. x to the fifth to the power of 3? Careful. We do a power of another power. We multiply. There you go. 15. 7 to the power of 3? Is 343. A squared to the power of 3? A to the 6th, and D to the 4th to the power of 3. D to the 12th.
So if I have something like this, I'm going to multiply through the parentheses first. 7x squared times 5x to the fifth is 35x to the seventh. So 7 times 5 is 35. x squared times x to the fifth is x to the seventh. 7x squared times the negative 4x to the third is careful. Negative 28. Yep, 7 times 4 is 28. x to the fifth. When we're multiplying, we add the power. And then we still have the negative 21x to the seventh over here. Are we done? No, we've got x to the seventh here. 35x to the seventh and negative 21x to the seventh is 14x to the seventh. And we add it and keep the same name. Minus 28x to the fifth. What would I do with something like this? Remember, this is just division here. So that's x to the fifth over 48 divided by x squared over 12. Which becomes x to the fifth over 48 times 12 over x squared. Now you can cross cancel if you want to. I'm just going to multiply it out. We'll reduce it later. 12x x to the fifth times 12 is 12x to the fifth. 48 times x squared is 48x squared. The 12 over 48 reduces to 1 fourth. The x to the fifth and the x squared reduce to... And x to the third, and it's going to go on top. So I could have 1x to the third over 4, or just x to the third over 4. Any questions? Factoring is another one of those skills that people tend to I forgot by the end of the unit here. If I ask you to factor, prime factor, if I, if I ever say factor, I do mean prime factor. Something like 280. Well, that's where we can do that factor tree. It ends in zero, so I know it's divisible by 10. 280 divided by 10 is 28. 10 can be divided up into 2 times 5. Those are both prime. 28 can be divided up into 7 times 4. 7 is prime, but 4 can be split into 2 times 2. So now everything's prime. So that means the 280, I have 2, 2, 2, 5, and 7. I can always double check by going back to my calculator and doing 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 7. Better give me 280, and it does. What if there are variables involved? What if I have something like twenty one hundred? x to the third y. <clears throat> well, we do the number separately, 2100. It ends in two zeros, so I know it's divisible by 100. 2100 divided by 100 would leave us with 21. 
100. I can divide up to 10 times 10. 10 splits into 2 times 5. Those are both prime. This 10 also splits into 2 times 5. Again, both prime. 21 splits into 3 times 7. Those are both prime. So over here, numerically, we have 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 times 5 times 7. x to the third is just x, 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 and then the y. Looks like that. If I ask you to find the LCM least common multiple, remember that is similar to like a least common denominator in fractions. If I ask you to find the least common multiple, of 45 and 72. One way we can do it would be to make lists. You could do 45 plus another 45 is 90 plus another 45 is 135 plus another 45 is 180 and you can keep going like that. 72 plus 72 is 144, plus another 72 is 216, plus another 72 is 288, plus another 72 is 360. That's probably where we're going to end up matching. You can just do those lists. Or you can factor. If I were to factor 45, I would get 3 times 3 times 5. If I were to factor 72, I'd get 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Three times three. And we look at what they have in common. They got threes and another three. Now we look at what's left. There's a five up here, so we need a five down here. Now they both have the five. We got three twos down here. We need to put three twos up here. Now they both have three twos. So on top, this is 45 times eight. which is 360. Down here, this is 72 times 5, which is 360. 360, as we found up here in the list, if we kept going, is our least common multiple. What if there's variables involved? Let's say I ask you to find the LCM of 10x to the third y and 6x squared y squared. Well, what is the least common multiple of 10 and 6? Thirty is smaller. So 30 is going to be the least one. 60 is a common multiple, just not the smallest one. Then for the variables, what we choose is the largest power. For multiples, we take the largest power. For factors, we take the smaller power. So we've got x to the third and x squared. So in our least common multiple, it's going to be x to the third. And then it's going to be y to the 2. Very good. That's most of the really fun stuff. Um, there are only seven word problems on this one. I cut back a little bit. Need to do a little bit about ratios to make this work. Um, if I ask you, um, today we have Two students in class out of five total. 
There are several ratios I can create there. I can create the ratio of absence to total. What would that be? How many are absent? Three, two, five total. I could ask you to create the ratio of present to absent. That would be what? Two to three. Or I could ask you to create present to total, which would be two out of five. You got her. And there are other ratios, but those are just the main ones. Any questions? Okay, there is no new quiz today, if I remember right. Let me double check. Make sure I didn't do that to you. Of course, the system's going to run slow here. This is the set. Yeah, there is no new quiz today. There is that homework that is due at 1 o'clock this afternoon yet, if you haven't finished that deadline of playing on Monday. Um, so really, all you have to do is finish up that homework and make sure you are ready for the test tomorrow.